Wow, this port is so buzzing! Thousands of people come here every day to work, cargoes come and go, fishers are weighing their catches for the day, and even posh cruise ships pop in here to show this idyllic place to all the people on vacay. The ocean shore is fantastic. People walk along the beach eating ice cream or building sandcastles. Oh, and by the way, right now we're standing where the Sahara Desert used to be. Normally our lifetime is too short to see any major changes. We don't notice mountains rise or the way rivers change their course. Entire valleys may be sinking, but it usually takes too long for them to sink entirely. Still, a group of scientists recently noticed there's a new ocean being formed really fast and we can even witness it appear. Look here! It's the Afar Triangle. There's the Horn of Africa Peninsula not far away. It's the exact site where the sixth ocean is being born at the moment. Wherever you are, you're basically standing or sitting on a tectonic plate. You're just sitting on a couch watching this video? Cool! Your couch is standing on the floor, your floor makes part of your house, your house is standing on the ground, and if you take a deeper look, it all stands on one of 15 principal tectonic plates. Together, these chunks are referred to as lithosphere. It's like a nice apple pie. The crust is the lithosphere, and the fragile apple filling is everything that's on the planet's surface. If the crust cracks, the filling leaks out. And this is what any earthquake is like. A tectonic plate, aka the crust, moves. The filling, also known as houses and people, is disturbed. Africa is made up of two plates, the Nubian and the Somali ones. Yeah, that's a large pie. And it seems like these two plates are constantly separating. It leads to an oceanic spreading ridge. It looks like the African continent is literally unzipping a part of it at this moment. A 345 square mile chunk of the Sahara Desert just split, so the magma rose. It triggered a series of earthquakes across Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Djibouti. And it's not just some minor earthquake. There are lots of fumes rising from those fissures, and it smells like sulfur. Phew! The eruption slowly pushed the old lava sediments away, which is followed by creation of the new seafloor. The crack is filled with magma, and when it cools, it forms the new oceanic floor. If this process doesn't stop, the Red Sea will finally flood the area, forming the sixth ocean, and Africa will be split into two parts. So we'll basically have two Africas. But wait, wait, wait. Neither you nor your grandchildren are going to see that sixth ocean. You'll only have five of them throughout your life. Same with our future generations. Same old Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and the Southern Oceans. Before the oceanic floor gets solid, and before the Red Sea actually starts flowing in there, many thousands if not millions of years must pass. The continents move as fast as your nails grow, and imagine that the longest nail ever seen in history was the thumbnail of an Indian man reaching almost 6.5 feet before he cut his nails. It took him almost 60 years to grow it. Now think how far the continents will have to move by the time you celebrate your 100th birthday. Spoiler, it's not going to be very far. But anyway, you can witness some minor changes that take place even now. All those cracks that may not seem that significant so far make all the landscape in the Afar region look really unique. There's a couple more reasons for this uniqueness. Meet Erta Ale in Ethiopia, the volcano famous for its world's longest-lasting lava lake. It's located in the Afar Depression, also known as the Afar Triangle. By the way, depression refers to the sunken area. There's nothing sad about it. It's not the only volcano in this area, Eritrea, known as the Nabro Volcano. It's never erupted, yet the lava in this area is pretty active. More volcanoes are to come because of the tectonic plate movements. They pull away from each other, and the Earth's crust gets thinner. The weaker the area is, the more volcanoes there are. Okay, the plates are separating and it's kind of inevitable. It's just the question of time. This process is also called the Afar Plume. We'll get more volcanoes, it's inevitable either. But how does it happen? Remember that apple pie? Yes, it was delicious. Well, things are actually much more complicated. The outer layer we walk on is relatively delicate and is made up of multiple broken pieces. It's like the eggshell or a lattice top on a pie. 
Let's take a deeper look at all the ingredients of this pie. Mm. If you cut a slice, you'll see it's made up of many parts, and there's something called the asthenosphere under the lithosphere. It's part of the Earth's mantle. Yeah, complicated. So the asthenosphere gets heated from within, and it rises, just like the dough when you put it in the oven. Remember those cracks on the surface of a freshly baked loaf of bread? Man, I'm getting hungry. Anyway, this is basically what happens to the Afar Triangle, and those cracks make this area split, creating those famous rifts and valleys that will possibly become so large and will probably get flooded so that the world's sixth ocean will appear there soon. Or not. Nobody's sure about it. Okay, but since the tectonic plates and, which is logical, all the continents are always on the move, we'll probably have more continents in the future. The answer is yes and no. If a part of Africa does split, we'll get one more continent, which is going to be even smaller than Australia. But there's one more possible way of how things will go. Chances are, in the next 250 million years, okay, in the distant 250 million years, there will be no more transatlantic flights. And a walking trip from Japan to Chile will be possible too. Way too long, but possible. It's all happening now, and the first results will be noticeable in some 50 million years from today. I won't be around then. Australia will move towards Southeast Asia, and it's going to fit in just perfectly. And Africa will be pushed to Southern Europe. Still, these transformations will take a really long time. People and continents have something in common. Remember that continents move as fast as our hair and nails grow just about 1.2 inches a month. Some of them move even 5 times faster, though, but even this speed is too slow for 4,500 miles distance between Africa and Europe. One theory tells us the things we've already seen before. Well, you didn't see that with your own eyes. Neither did any of your ancestors who came to America across the Atlantic hundreds of years ago. The fact is, all the continents were once one landmass known as the Pangaea supercontinent. Even though it formed over 300 million years ago and split about 180 million years ago, give or take, it might come back together. So kangaroos can easily migrate from Australia to the UK if they feel like it, but the latter might be accidentally crashed while all the continents merge together. The Americas would collide. Antarctica would drift to them, and it all will merge with the already collided Africa-Eurasia. In this scenario, one large ocean and one large continent will appear, namely Novo Pangaea. Another possible scenario claims the continents might merge into the uniform landmass or form a circle with a large sea inside and the super Pacific Ocean outside. This continent is referred to as Pangaea Ultima. The third theory might be already coming to life. The Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans might just cease to exist, forming the new ocean basin. Eurasia will be split to form a new ocean, and all the continents will migrate to merge into the supercontinent Orica. And the fourth and last theory claims that the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans will remain almost unchanged, and all the continents but Antarctica will merge into one leaving poor Antarctica even more isolated and abandoned than it is now. <laughs> nah, don't feel bad. Since all the continents keep drifting northwards even now, it's quite probable that almost all of them will meet up somewhere at the North Pole.